Wasn't that easy to find? He was on green leaves with this green coloration. Uh, one of the things about a grasshopper is it represents a lot of insects with most of the generic parts. It's got compound eyes that you can see. A compound eye is an eye with lots of little lenses as part of its construction. You can see the little antennae here. One of them has been damaged a little bit someplace out there in that hostile world. Six legs. I'm not going to show you the six legs. He might jump away. This grasshopper has wings. A lot of people aren't totally aware of the wings because they hop around. They don't fly long distances. Two wings on that side and two wings on the other side. Insects traditionally have four wings. Some exceptions. Fleas, for example, have no wings. Flies, for example, have one pair of flight wings. Beetles have one pair of flight wings. So lots of exceptions from this basic grasshopper model in the insect world. Nice strong leg. The muscles in that leg are attached to the inside of this exoskeleton. Muscles in our leg are not attached to the outside, they're attached to bones. You can see these hind legs which is a feature of the grasshopper group. Very strong little spines on the hind legs. You can see their rear end here. Female has on some species a little structure that can work down into the dirt or work down into wood where the eggs can be placed. Sometimes when they're unhappy, like this one probably is, they produce a kind of a juice from their crop which is called tobacco juice. This one is not that angry. I'm going to turn it over so we can see the mouth parts. has mandibles that chew sideways so that it can chew on a piece of grass a little easier. In other insects, these basic mouth parts are modified into different structures. This has mandibles for chewing. A butterfly, for example, would take some of those mouth parts and modify it into a sucking straw, like a, a proboscis, it's called. Around the mouth parts are little special structures, some for tasting, some for feeling, all kinds of sensory structures on those little parts around the mouth. You back and see that compound eye again. Three body parts, the head, the thorax, and abdomen. Little holes in the side of the thorax. I don't know if they're that visible, but they breathe through little holes in their side. Holes are called spiracles. Sometimes they're called spiracles. You can see it pulsating. So air goes in the little holes into a network of little tubules inside the body, and that's where gases are exchanged, oxygen into the tissue, waste carbon dioxide exits, no oxygen in the bloodstream, no gases dissolved in the bloodstream. That's not how it oxygenates its body. Quite different from vertebrates. That mechanism also limits the size that an insect can be, along with an exoskeleton that is cumbersome when it's big. So respiration keeps insects small along with an exoskeleton, this hard covering on the outside called an exoskeleton, made of a tough material called chitin. If you've ever stepped on a cockroach, you can hear the cockroach snap. That shows you how tough that chitin material is. The colors of this chitin are green and maybe some yellow. One of the things about a grasshopper is it represents a lot of insects with most of the generic